thinking of an eye. Twinkly means blink. Before you can blink your eye. At the last trump. At the last trump. Oh, just before. It ain't going to be beating him up, Scotty. <laughs> Not going to be in that stuff then. And sometimes they, they look like they're going to get him in. <laughs> and I ain't going to be in that stuff, Paul said. It's, it's for certain. It's going to be in a moment. It's going to be in the twinkling of an eye when the last trump shall sound. And the day, and the day shall be raised incorruptible. You know, brother, that's what John means when he said there'll be no more pain. That's what John is saying. Hold your clothes. Get from the second grade to chapter five of all your students. And all you can jot it down. You got it. Word one. We know. For we know. If, our earthly house if this old earthly house, this is the earthly house, this old body of flesh. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with man eternally. Where? When I get to heaven, I'm going to have a new body. This old sickly body I've lived in for years. I don't have to worry about that. This old body, Brother Leslie, that one day I'll be shedding off and in death. I don't worry about that no more. But God give me my new house not made with hands. Eternally in this one we do you get the picture, folks? In this Tabernacle of clay. Job 14. Job says, Man that is born a woman has but a few days and they are full of trouble. You're going to have to suffer in this life. And, and can I say this without offending you? I don't care how godly you live, you're going to suffer. I don't care how godly you live. Some folks think that I'm suffering because I'm living ungodly. That may be a reason that they brought it on. But let me tell you something. You can live godly. Oh, Rosa, tell me this. If any man live godly, if you live godly in Christ, Jesus expects to suffer. But is the suffering worth going to hell? Oh, yes, it is. Fear not him that can destroy the body, but can't touch your soul. Rather fear him that is not only able to kill your body, but able to cast both body and soul in pit. Fear him. And if you love your mother, your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, your uncle, your aunt, your kinfolk, all of them, more than me, you're not worried to go to heaven. Little Lord Robert. We shall be changed. We shall be changed. For this corruptible. For this corruptible. Must put on incorruptible. For this corruptible shall put on incorruptible. And this mortal, and this mortal, and this mortal and this shall mortal be put on immortality. Put on immortality. Oh, okay. That's what that's good. Oh, yeah. Drop back to verse 24. Drop 15, huh? Then coming to him. Then. Yes. What that night? <laughs> Lord have mercy. And I'm about finished, Brother Cox. I just got my two. <laughs> I, I, I got my two, but I lost. Then coming to him. When? When I put on my immortal. Oh, I see where she's trying to put the shepherd And I'm not trying to. Then come the end. When, when
when that old body that we are suffering with, this one that we're groaning in, Brother Keith and Sister Spencer and others in the hospital right now, and they are out there in that hospital because of this body, this old tabernacle. If they had that immortal, that eternal body, they would not be in little Alex's in his from day to day, he experiences his pain because he's in this body. But when God provide him with a new, for them with a new, no more pain, no more dying. My wife and others do the same. My son people that I know, Brother Walker and uh, Orlando and uh, Lord, and Brother Terry Lewis. And I, I hope I've not offended people. I'm just trying to make things right for you. Make it, right. Take your eyes, put your eyes on the cross. And don't worry about what's going on. God is saying, and God is in heaven saying, I'm still in charge. I'm still in charge. Number three, will we recognize our children in heaven? If they get that. If they get that. Will we recognize our children in heaven? I want to tell you something. I don't know where we somehow or another got the idea. Matthew 18, verse 10, Robert, as well as 19, verse 14, John Luke. 18, 10, Matthew, Jesus said something what? Take heed. Take heed. That ye despise not one of these little ones. None of these little ones. I say unto you. I say unto you. That in heaven. That in heaven. Their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. That's right. Children are going to be in heaven. You know, little children, mothers who have less calories, and little babies eat in heaven. Parents, you know, they eat, have less calories, and little babies be in heaven. He's in heaven right now. Babies that was aborted, parents aborted them. Stay in heaven. Mom and daddy, you may not make it. But that child is in heaven. And our Father, God our Father, wants you, mother, to rejoin. John, read your passage. Jesus said, Suffer the little children. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, Suffer the little children. And forbid them not. Forbid them not. To come unto me. To come unto me. For of such, such is the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is full of children. I don't know where anybody and how anybody can steal the sin that a man is born in sin when Jesus is saying, Little children are in heaven. That makes children that are sinners, that God has taken sinners to heaven. That's not true, Brady. Children born into this world innocent of all the wrong that is ever been done by mama and or daddy, uncle and or aunt, grandmama. They don't in, you don't inherit sin. Sin is what you do. It's not what happens to you. It's something you do. Can I say that again? Sin is not what happens to you. It's about what you do yourself. 
Sin is, John said, 1 John 3 and 4, it's a transgression of law. Mom and dad may have transgressed God's law in the avoiding of the misuse of their bodies, but that doesn't make the little child upset. They only make mom and daddy upset. Final thought. About to finish now. About to finish, Brother John Hood. Will the elderly, will old folk be in heaven? Will old folk be in heaven? I sure hope so. And I'm old. I am old. Jennifer. But I'm still good. Right. <laughs> you ain't never seen a thing in this world as old as I am and still look as good as I look. Oh, Brother Dennis. <laughs> yeah! I'm going to ask this little girl here. Don't, don't, don't feel bad. How do I look? I'm going to like well, look back in the night. Now, if you tell me I'm ugly. I won't dare you to take another look. <laughs> you think I look pretty good? <laughs> Boy, I can. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, folks. Hebrew 11, verse 10. And finally, I want to just close with Revelation 22, verse 1. We'll close right there by the top. Hebrews 11, verse 10. Did I say 11, verse 10? Yeah. Well, he took Abraham, old man. Oh, man. Brother Len, how old are you? 86. The Lord has been good at it. Do you want to go to that? <laughs> Brother Kathy, how old are you? 85. Wonderful. God has been good. I think they might have.
I was at the, uh, I had in mind that old uh, discounted auto. No, I never had a room, and I thought somebody baby my head. I said, who are you? And you know, he looked at me, he said, granddaddy got some big old ears. <laughs> I guess he said, those things look like wax on the side of your head. But he said, my daddy got some big old ears. Well, he got caught in a fire. You know, the little fella thought that getting in the bed and covering up, putting his blanket and things up over it would protect it. And instead of protecting it, because that's where they found his little charred body. Peter's. One day I hope to see Peter's again. His name is Titus, but his heart is Peter's. My mother, my daddy, my uncle, my aunt, everybody in my family that have died, died out of Jesus Christ. We're not members. But that doesn't change Revelation 14, verse 13. John says, I heard the Spirit say, right, blessed, I'm sorry, Brother Cox, blessed is the dead that die in the world. From henceforth shall they rest from their labor and their works in the Won't it be good to go to heaven? Won't it be? J.J., when we get to heaven, I want you there too. Yes, sir. You and me. Now, I don't want you to be trying to drive the truck. A blessed bus is on All of us. I, everybody. I know the sound of my voice that, that see my face right now. I really want all of us to be there. And you know, heaven is not going to be crowded. Many mansions. Jesus said if it wasn't true, I would have told you. I would have told you. That's a question mark. Would not I have told you if there was not many mansions in my father's house? That's what we need to recognize. It's not going to be our overcrowded. Let's all, if we have not, let's begin right now making preparation. What'd you do? Now Jesus says, and you know, I, I don't understand Christians. Uh, you know, you got to get them to commit to what they already committed to when they were paid to die. When you, when you were baptized, you committed yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. There can be no greater commitment than to be committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. When that you were asked, do you believe with all your heart Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You said, yes. We took you and baptized you. At that moment, uh, uh, you became committed to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, if you're not committed to me, he said, you're looking back. If you're still looking back, you're not what? You're not fit for the king. You can't keep looking back. You can't. You, and he, he suggested something to his audience. He said, remember Lot's wife, Luke 11, 32. What happens when she looks back? Let's start making preparation to go home to live with God. <laughs> The angel of Matthew. What's the name of that song? If heaven. What? This world is not my home. If heaven is not my home. Brother, uh, Brother Pig, will you sing that for us? Brother Smith says it's three. 
I didn't hear. 361. 361. Get your song.